Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to use the idea of moles to calculate the masses of reactants and products and chemical reactions. This is higher tier only. This is a big topic and it can seem tricky so I've split it over several videos. By now you should be getting comfortable with the idea of moles and chemistry. We're going to be using that idea a lot in this video so let's get started. First of all, remember that we calculate the number of moles using this equation. The number of moles is the mass of a chemical divided by the relative atomic mass. We use this equation when we're looking at elements. However, if we're looking at compounds, then we use this equation, which is almost the same. The number of moles is the mass divided by the relative formula mass. Now, if you cannot calculate relative formula mass, then you should go back and watch my video on that topic before going any further with this video. Now we can use the idea of moles to calculate the masses of chemicals that take part in chemical reactions. I'm going to show you how to do this. It's much easier than it looks. Here's a typical question. Calculate the mass of magnesium chloride that could be produced from 72 grams of magnesium. Assume that the chlorine is unlimited. So how do we tackle a question like this? First we need to look at the chemical equation. On the left hand side we've got magnesium and chlorine and on the right hand side we've got magnesium chloride. You can see that we've got no large numbers in front of these chemicals. Now in chemistry if there's no large number then that means 1. So in this case I'm going to show the numbers even though we don't normally write the number 1. That's going to help you see what's going on. So what do these numbers actually mean? Well they tell us that if we had one mole of magnesium we could make one mole of magnesium chloride. Now you'll notice that I'm ignoring the chlorine and that's because the question tells us that it's unlimited. So we don't need to consider it. Okay, so the question tells us that we've got 72 grams of magnesium. The first thing we need to do is calculate the number of moles of magnesium that we have. So the number of moles is the mass divided by the relative atomic mass. 72 divided by 24 means that we've got three moles of magnesium in our reaction. Now we know from the chemical equation that one mole of magnesium will produce one mole of magnesium chloride. Therefore three moles of magnesium will produce three moles of magnesium chloride. We need to calculate the mass of magnesium chloride produced, so to do that we go back to our equation. The number of moles equals the mass divided by the relative formula mass. We can rearrange this equation to work out the mass. The mass in grams equals the number of moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. The relative formula mass for magnesium chloride is 95. So 3 multiplied by 95 gives us a mass of 285 grams. And that's our final answer. Here's one for you to try. Calculate the mass of calcium sulfate that could be produced from 80 grams of calcium. Assume that the sulfuric acid is unlimited. Pause the video and try this yourself. We start by calculating the number of moles of calcium from the mass that we've been given which is 80 grams. So the number of moles is the mass divided by the relative atomic mass. The relative atomic mass of calcium is 40, so we've got 2 moles of calcium. There are no big numbers in the equation, so that means that 1 mole of calcium could produce 1 mole of calcium sulfate. We've got 2 moles of calcium, so that means that we could produce 2 moles of calcium sulfate. We can calculate the mass of this by multiplying the number of moles by the relative formula mass. The relative formula mass of calcium sulfate is 136. So this gives us a mass of 272 grams, and that's our final answer. Here's another one for you. Calculate the mass of calcium carbonate that we would need to produce 224 grams of calcium oxide. Pause the video and try this yourself. So we need to make 224 grams of calcium oxide. We find the number of moles by dividing the mass by the relative formula mass. The relative formula mass of calcium oxide is 56. 224 divided by 56 means that we need 4 moles of calcium oxide. There are no big numbers in the equation, so this means that 1 mole of calcium carbonate could produce 1 mole of calcium oxide. This means that we need 4 moles of calcium carbonate. To calculate the mass, we multiply the number of moles by the relative formula mass of calcium carbonate, which is 100. 
This means that we need 400 grams of calcium carbonate. And that's our final answer. You'll find plenty more questions on calculating reacting masses in my revision workbook, which you can get by clicking on the link above. In the next video, we'll continue looking at how to calculate reacting masses, looking at more complicated examples. Thank you.